Hi guys, welcome along. It's Derby weekend. One of the most fantastic weekends of racing we can watch. It was the Oaks Day today. I think I'll just take a few points from today's racing. What cracking racing we had. First of all, the first group one, the Coronation Stakes, Pile Driver. What a horse this is. He was a uh, he wasn't sold as 10 grand as a foal. A real family horse. Martin Dwyer riding for his father in law, Willem Yor, and uh, he's gone and won a group one. Martin Dwyer, Derby winning jockey, one of the real good guys in the way room, very solid rider. We've seen what it meant to him after the race, fantastic result. And it looked like the William Haggis, uh, Handam Amak Tomb horse, Al Azi, with Jim Crowley in the saddle, was going to come and pick him off. But Pile Driver showed his grit and determination to knuckle it down and get over the winning line. Then we had the feature race, the Oaks. What a fantastic race it was. A record-breaking win for Aidan O'Brien with Snowfall. Frankie Dettori, the man is just ageless, isn't he? But the story I'm going to take from the race is the second horse, Mystery Angel. Of course, we had Ben Curtis on during the week. That video is still on our YouTube channel. What a result for such a, an upcoming trainer and a, an owner who's he's setting boundaries here with these syndicates. They supplemented this mare, took the chance, 17,000 sterling to supplement her. She was a very good winner of the Pretty Polly in Newmarket. That was on good ground. But Ben Curtis, I think, gave it a fantastic ride. Might be a little bit biased, but to finish second in an Oaks, it's definitely after paying its rewards. But that was today's action. We're going to focus on one of the meetings, if not the race of the flat calendar. It's the Epsom Derby. But before we go to the feature race, which is off at of 4.30, we have a seven race card. And it begins at 2 o'clock. The first race is a handicap. It's over mile two. We've got eight runners lining up here. And there's one here that catches my eye, King Frankel. Mark Johnson, Ben Curtis teaming up here. This horse bolted up over mile two of Pontif Pontifact. It wasn't a very strong contest, contest, but he didn't back up that performance. And it was a very good second to a very well handicapped Sir Michael Stout horse at Newmarket last time on good to soft ground. Of course, we've seen the way the ground was today. It was soft ground today. So this ground is changing all the time. But I'm reading quotes from the track and from people around the track to say that there's going to be good drying there and overnight. Epsom can dry out overnight so good. So I'm, I'm reading. I read a quote somewhere that the ground should no, should be no softer than good to soft. So, But it's still there's still going to be a bit of a toe in. They're still going to get their toe in. But I do like this uh, three-year-old son of Frankel. He was progressing last year. He has only he's lightly raised. He had only six starts, and he's only been out of money once in those six starts. So I'm hoping King Frankel for Ben Curtis and Mark Johnson can kick us off to winner on Derby Day. That brings us to the second race on the card. It's a Philly and Mayors Group Three over a mile. This is a race I didn't have much of an opinion of, but there's two I can see running somewhat good races at big prices. Thank you next for Ben Curtis again. This time Richard Hannon trains i was looking through this horse's form this filly's form should i say um she has very she was very consistent last year but she um she was second to saffron beach last year and it, that was on soft ground saffron beach went on to be second to 1000 guineas now saffron beach did put up a little bit of a low performance today but that form last year, if she can come back to form at 25 to 1, I think she could be a little bit of a fun each way bet in this race. The other one that I might have a look at tomorrow is <laughs> Tomorrow's Dream. It's actually well named, isn't it? Uh, for William Haggis with Tom Mark 1, again, a bit of an each way price. Um, if the ground dries out and it's not too soft, I think she could be a little bit of a crack in each way bet as well. That brings us to the 310. It's a group three, the Diamond Stakes, over a mile. And I'm going to go for the Mark Johnson's Marie's Diamond here with SDS Sylvester de Souza in the saddle. He was a winner on good to soft ground last year at Haydock over six furlongs. Then backed up that performance, winning a listed race over a mile on good ground. It was a very good listed race a couple of starts after that on a, of a listed race over a mile on good, on, uh, in Newmarket. And it was third, 
placed on heavy ground as well. So it's it can run on any ground. It has some very good form last year, very consistent. My only concern is the its last run this year, it was a very below performance run. Normally it's very ultra consistent if it doesn't win top two or three. But uh, if you can put a line through that, I can see it bouncing back here. And Marie's Diamond gets my vote here again each way with SDS in the saddle. And that brings us to the Epsom Dash. It's a 345. It's a 5 4 on 20 runner handicap. This is just one of the races to watch. It's it's a spectacle of a race. They go a lickety split. Uh, set a lick, they set a lickety split pace in this. It's a fantastic race to watch. I enjoy having a bit in this race because... You just go so it's such a pulsating race. But there's one here that catches my eye. Sunday Sovereign, we tipped this horse up two runs back at a massive price and it finished ninth that day, but it wasn't beaten that far. But since that, it went to York in a very, very competitive handicap and finished second at a, at a decent price again. So hopefully, everyone took notice that day and they got a few quid the last day. But Sunday Sovereign for me for Tim Eastery. Tim Easterby with Sylvester de Souza. Of course, he's retained by King Power, who owns the horse. They have two in the race. So you'd imagine that SDS would have the choice. Not imagine he would have the choice. This horse had a very useful form for Paddy Toomey before being purchased by King Power. And he actually went to join Roger Varian. He had one run for Roger Varian. He didn't went to Tim Easterby. But as I said, he's run in the Curra. He beat a very good horse of Aidan O'Brien in the Cora, and then he went on and won a, um, in Tipperary on heavy ground. So he can handle the ground, no issue. He's coming back to form. There's money for it. He, he was 8 or 9 to 1. I think he's into 6 or 7 to 1. And Boyle Sports are paying five places in the race. So uh, I can see him really, really coming back to himself. So we go from five furlands to the feature race, a mile and a half derby. This, for me, is the race of the year, of course. If you're, if you're an owner or a breeder, every three-year-old colt that you breed, you want to end up in this race. It's 40 years on since we've seen the record-breaking Shergar winning, and it's 20 years on since we've seen a record that turned out to be Galileo, who's sired five winners of this race since. The daddy of all daddies, Galileo. So maybe every 20 years, we're going to see something special here. And Bashoid Ballet, He's a warm favour for Aidan O'Brien. It's very interesting. Aidan, of course, dropped a bombshell on us 48 hours ago, just before the decks, saying that he was probably going to only run one in the race. It, it either shows very so much confidence in Bashai Ballet, or there's something not quite all right. Of course, some of the other horses, like Van Gogh, they're heading to the French Derby. Shorter trip, probably suit. But I'm still I'm just wondering why he didn't run a pacemaker in the race. Now, Bashai Ballet, Bashay Ballet, Bashay Ballet, <laughs> even. He looks so super, super, super straightforward. I actually, I backed this horse anti post. He's my only anti post bet in the race. I'm actually on my 12 to 1, so I'm on a bit of value. Will I back him at 6 to 4? Not so much. But look, he's, he looks so, so straightforward. As I said, he's had two runs this season. Bought in Leperstown, bought over a mile two. He won the Bally Sacks. Over a mile two by two and a quarter lengths. That's a group three. He then went on and bolted up in the Derby trial stake by six lengths. And beating another Aiden runner on good to yield and ground. So there was a bit of a toe on the ground that day. The third horse went on and won in Leperstown the other night for Donica O'Brien. And of course the fourth horse went on and won the Irish 2,000 guineas with Rory Cleary for Jim Bulger. Who lines up here again? He could, he could be one because... I don't think he was fully wound up that day, and we've seen what he's capable of. He was kind of the talking horse from Jim Bulger over the over the winter. Jim is a very very shrewd man. If there's if there's kind of if there's a word about a horse or if there's vibes about a horse, they very rarely don't live up to the hype. So he could be he could be right there at the business end. Jim Bulger, one of the shrewdest men in the game, as we've seen. But I'm going to side with side with Bashay Bolly Ryan Moore. Of course, looking to win his third derby, I think he'll get it done. I think if he drifts to two to one, he's starting to come out a bit in price. If he goes off a of two to one, I'd ex he'd be a bit of value then. But at the price he is now, definitely not. The each way player for me, and I actually hope he runs him down, is Ben Curtis, Mark Johnson, gear up. 
We spoke to Ben during the week. It would be such a fantastic story if Ben could win his first group one, first classic, all in one here. He went second in the Oaks. Look, if he hits the frame, the ground, as we said, it shouldn't be any more. They could get rain overnight, but if they don't, it should be good to, good to soft. This horse was a, was a group one winner on heavy ground, so he'll handle the conditions. Boy Sports are playing four places in the race. There's support coming in. When Mark Johnson has support for a horse, it's very rarely wrong. He was 40 to 1 overnight. He's into 22 to 1 now, 25 to 1, I think Boyle Sports are. So I think that could be a little bit of a value of an each way bet at four places. But it looks to be a cracking day's action. We had a cracking day's action. I can't wait for the feature race, but there's a couple of races in between, especially the 5 4 on sprint, which I look forward to. And hopefully, we see a 20 year anniversary of something, something special again. Again, guys, if you like what you see, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, share it out. And I'll be back very, very soon. Thank you, guys.